This video is gonna show you two boring things that every high-level SaaS needs, and if you skip them, you're gonna have problems later. So stick around. All right, welcome back to my high-level SaaS series where I'm documenting my journey to 2,000 users on my high-level white-label SaaS. Right now, I'm just over 200 users and I'm gonna talk about some things that I had to learn the hard way and figure out on my own. Now, I'm making this video so you don't have to. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about here is forming an LLC. Now this is a hotly debated topic. I'm gonna to preface this all by saying, I am not a legal professional. I'm not a tax professional. You should talk to somebody local in your area before doing anything. This video is just gonna show you what I did in my thought process behind it when I actually went to go form my LLC. Now, when starting a business in the US, you do not need to have an LLC to start. You can operate as what's called a sole proprietor proprietor, which basically means that you personally own your business and all the income is reported personally on your social security number and you add it to your personal taxes. Most small businesses are actually run this way in America and that's actually what I did. I ran that way for about six months before I found out that I was actually onto something and took the steps to form an LLC. Now, the reasons you would form an LLC are not for tax purposes. In fact, you can take advantage of most of the same tax advantages that you would get with an LLC as a sole proprietor because you can also deduct business expenses as an individual. The reason why you would start an LLC is to limit your personal liability from your business. You want to basically build a wall between your personal life and your business life. This way, if something goes wrong in your business and somebody sues you, they can't come over and take the house that you have to sleep in every night. That's the only reason why you would get an LLC. And with that said, let's jump right into my computer where I can go ahead and I can show you how to apply for one. So basically what I did to get to the IRS website is I went to go start an LLC like most people on the internet will do. And you'll notice there's gonna be a lot of ads at the top of this particular search query. As you'll see here, Zen Business at Start Your LLC. LegalZoom here is LLC. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of people who actually charge exorbitant markups to do what I'm about to show you here in this particular YouTube video. So. Uh, what you want to do is if you scroll down here to the limited liability of a company and you click on it, you'll notice it doesn't actually show you where to apply. So with the search phrase that you're going to use here on Google, and again, I'll leave a link to everything here. But if you go to apply for an EIN, you'll see irs.gov on the bottom here, apply for an em employer identification number over there. This is the correct website that you want to be on when you go to apply for your EIN, which is required to get an LLC in your state. That's also another thing that I'd like to clarify. So your EIN, your employer identification number is done at the US federal level filed directly with the IRS. That is not an LLC. An LLC takes that EIN and then forms you as a company inside the state that you want to do business, the state that you live in basically. So what we have to do is we have to go to the IRS directly, get our EIN, it's a free process, it takes about 10 minutes to do, and then we take that EIN and we go fill out paperwork with our state government through their LLC process and there is a small fee attached to there at the state level. So once you're on this website, again, if you're looking at the screen that looks just like this, you're in the right spot. The number one thing here is hours of operation. You can only apply for an EIN between 7 a.m and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, outside of that, the application will not work. The website will be appear to be down. Don't know why that is. Don't know why you would close a website, but that's the way that it operates. So what you're going to do there is you're basically going to, again, determine whether you want to form an EIN, get an LLC. If you're going to apply for an LLC, you would get an EIN. On the bottom here, it's very simple. You click apply online now, and it's gonna take you to a screen just like this. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole process because I don't need a new one. I'm just doing this for a video. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna begin the application. And what you're going to do is you're gonna select the type of legal structure for an EIN. Now, for me, I did an LLC. Again, talk to your attorney, talk to your CPA, determine that's the right structure for you. But what I did was I applied for an LLC, limited liability company, hit the continue. I went through, uh, basically we'll clarify what it is, what it is not. So we hit your continue. How many members are in the LLC? If it's just you, you're gonna put one. If you have a business partner, you're gonna put two. And me and my wife actually were on our LLC together, so we actually did two. And then select the state and territory where it's physically located. I'm gonna apply for a Pennsylvania LLC when I'm done with this. I would hit continue. It's gonna talk about all of the, uh, confirm the selection. We'll hit continue. Now it's saying, why are you requesting an LLC? Let's go here. Let's say I started a new business. Click over here. You would enter your information that is here. This is basically who is the responsible party. This is basically gonna show the IRS who's actually applying. After you go through that particular screen through there, 
Uh, again, I, I didn't put my social security on there for obvious reasons, but also I want you to take note here on the bottom as you're going through this, typographical errors. Make sure you add every period, every comma, every colon, every junior. Everything has to be to the letter because you cannot do it over again. So you'll put the street address of your LLC. I highly recommend you do not put your home address here for an LLC uh, because that's gonna put your home address on file. It's gonna put your home address out on all your web pages because you have to put your business address on all your web pages. So what I recommend is going to something like a UPS store or something like a FedEx Kinko's or someplace where they offer private mailboxes. You might wanna Google that private mailboxes near me, go there, pay them like $100, $200 per year. And that's gonna give you an address that's basically a PO box, but it's not a PO box address because you cannot use a PO box as your LLC address. It has to be an actual street address. And that's how you do it, is private mailboxes or how you do that. Then you're also gonna put a phone number on here. And then if you have an address different from above where you want your mail to be sent, you're gonna give them if you wanna do a separate mailing address. Uh, this again, this is a mailbox, so I'm gonna have all my information sent here. And when I went to click continue, what's also gonna happen is I got this error here. This is also important to note uh, your number. You should not put the number. The hashtag in there was fine, so I just made it sweet, 133STE. That's the number of the private mailbox. And once you get through the addresses page, it's gonna bring you onto the details page. This is the last page before you actually get your EIN and you hit continue. Again, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to complete this page in its entirety, but you would put the uh, the legal name of your business, which would be the name of your business, comma, LLC. Make sure you include however your business is de designated there. In this case, comma, LLC. If you're doing business as a different name, put your different trade name in there. Have your county and your state, and then state territory where articles of organization will be filed. So again, if you're gonna be do Pennsylvania, I would slide slide down here and go here, Pennsylvania. And then LLC start date, typically the month when you form, you want it to start as soon as you file out this. So right now I'm making this video in February of 2024. So I would go February 2024, and then I would hit the continue button and it would issue me on the next page, my very own EIN number with the IRS and a form that's called an SS4. Let me pull that up on screen, show you what that looks like in a second. And this is what the SS4 looks like. They're gonna send it to you by email, or I think you can actually download it on the next screen instantly. Either way, you're going to get this letter. You're gonna get your brand new employer identification number. It's gonna be right up here in the top right. It's blurred for obvious reasons, but basically this is going to be your proof that you have an EIN with the IRS. And what I want you to do is I want you to treat this and guard it with your life, print out a copy, put it in a safe, save it in your email, save it on your computer, save multiple copies, because you will not get another copy of this. Ask me how I know. What I had to do was I actually had to contact my bank. They had a fax copy of my other LLC that I can barely read. So when you get something like this, guard it, because it's really hard to get another one if you miss it or if you delete it somehow. But once we have our SS4, that means that we are ready to go ahead now and file our LLC paperwork with the state that we want to go ahead and do business in. But again, when I go ahead and I Google Pennsylvania LLC, you're gonna see a bunch of ads of people who are going to want to charge 500 or $1,000 on top of the fee uh, for what I'm gonna show you here in this video. So we're gonna come all the way down here, scroll past the ads, and for me, you wanna go to a .gov website. Make sure it's .gov, not .org. Uh, for Pennsylvania, if you go and you end up on this particular page, you're in the right spot. Again, you'll be on your state's Department of State. Again, if you wanna Google North Carolina LLC or Kentucky LLC, wherever you're watching this from, you're gonna end up on your state's website. Pennsylvania makes it kind of simple. Basically what they do is they tell us to form, you have to file a certificate of organization accompanied by a docketing statement. And they were nice enough to actually give us the codes for these forms. So if I were in Pennsylvania, I would go to the code here. I would go in and go PA, paste the code, brings up a nice little PDF right up here. And then this is going to be your certificate of organization. And then on the other one, it basically said the docketing statement. It gave us another code for the document there. Copy that. We're gonna go PA and the code. It's gonna bring this one up here. Now here's the docketing statement. So these two forms need to be filled out and filed with the state for me to actually get my Pennsylvania LLC. Now they give you, at least in Pennsylvania, they give me nice form instructions as to how to fill it out here on the bottom. All I had to do was file that with the actual information. And again, you need your EIN number because your EIN number is on the docketing statement. You have to go to do the IRS first before you can do the Pennsylvania paperwork or the state paperwork. But again, I just fill out the entity name, taxable party, a description of the business activity, which in your, our case, if you're doing a high level SaaS company, you would either do marketing agency or software company. 
one of those two designations is fine. And then uh, fiscal year end, I just make mine with the calendar year end of 1231. It makes it really easy to remember. Uh, once you fill out that, you're also going to fill out, again, fill out this information. It's all the same name, address, uh, EIN number, who's responsible. It basically just puts everything on record with the state. Now, this is not free. This is something, there is a fee attached to this. In Pennsylvania, it's $125. Uh, for my knowledge, or anywhere right between $100 and $200. There is a fee that you're gonna have to file. But again, it's not a huge fee, especially if you're starting a company, there's fees involved. So again, get those two things filed. And then for me, I think I had to wait two weeks before I got this form back and I got papers saying that I was officially a Pennsylvania LLC. And just like that, we now have an LLC and we can mark ourselves as an LLC inside of high level and we can do business and now limit our personal liability of our business activities. But once you have your LLC, you're actually not 100% done. If you wanna take your LLC and then go get a business bank account, your business banker is probably gonna ask for something called an operating agreement. And I didn't actually know how to write an operating agreement. I had no idea what it was. So I found a site called eForms.com. I'm actually gonna bring it up right here on the screen. Uh, eForms is a service. They're not free, but they offer a free trial. So me being the bootstrapping young entrepreneur, started a free trial. I got my operating agreement. I printed it off and then I canceled my trial. Uh, but basically what they do is they can actually create all kinds of legal forms. Uh, it's, it's questionnaire, it's templated. So if we go here to search operating agreement, you'll see already LLCs up here at the top of your single member, you would do it yourself. Uh, I did a multi-member because I had business partners. So I'll click multi-member. You'll drop down for your state. In this case, it's Pennsylvania. And we're basically gonna go into here and hit create document. And then you're gonna put, as it loads, you put your company name, new company, LLC. What's the business purpose? And it basically guides you through all of the information required to create an operating agreement. All right, so I wanna turn the camera on through the process here. Uh, the first 40% was pretty much just who you are, what's your address, uh, if there's multiple members, who owns what percentage, basic straightforward questions. Uh, I got here to the registered agent and I figured some of you guys might actually have uh, an issue with this. Uh, so registered agent is basically who is responsible, who's designated to receive basically all the legal papers for the business. If it's just you or it's you and a business partner, pick somebody and put their name here. So for our fictitious person, John Doe, and we're gonna say 123 Main Street. We'll go through here. Next thing here, tax status. Okay, again, this is something talk to a professional about. For me, with my LLC, I chose to be taxed as a partnership rather than S Corporation. I know S Corp is very popular right now going through short form social media. I chose partnership, but again, talk to a professional on what to do. LLC will be managed by who? So if it's just you and your business partner or it's just you, it's be managed by the members. Will the LLC be terminated on a specific date? Now, if you don't plan on going out of business anytime soon, you're gonna hit no. When will the profits or distributions be made to members? Now, there's a couple things here. If you plan on paying yourself monthly, you'd hit monthly, but you'd have to make a payout every single month. The most flexible option here is when the members decide, which essentially tells you you can pull money out at any time. And it's a, it's a, an agreement amongst all of the members. That offers the most flexibility. Next thing here, when you get to business decisions, there's no right or wrong answer here. If you have multiple members, LLC, uh, you basically make talk to your business partners and talk about, do you wanna do business decisions based on majority vote or unanimous vote? Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just, a, a standard form where everyone can agree, this is how the business will operate. Uh, assignment, so a member can assign or transfer their LLC ownership interest. This is basically what will happen if somebody wants to leave the partnership. You can say yes, they can leave at any time, or you have to vote with it, and it has to be 51% or everybody has to agree 100% unanimous vote that this person can sell off their part of the business. Again, no right or wrong answer here. Can a member withdraw from the company? Yes, basically this is if somebody wants to leave and give up their partnership and not sell their interest to somebody else. Basically everybody else left gets a bigger slice of the pie. And again, how do you wanna do it? Do you wanna vote on it or just let anybody leave at any time? That is uh, again, no right or wrong answer here. New members, if you wanna bring somebody into the company, this is something here, no right or wrong. Talk to your business partners, come up with an agreement on how you want to bring new people in or not. For me, I wanted to make sure it was a universal unanimous vote 100% because that was going to change the dynamic of the company if you bring a new partner on or not. So I made it a unanimous vote, but again, you can do no restrictions, majority vote, totally up to you. Certificates of ownership. Should a certificate of issuance be made to each member? Since it was just me and my wife on our LLC, I did no. 
Uh, it is up to you if you wanna do it, make it official with certificates. I hit no here. I'm um, then annual meeting. You do have to pick an annual meeting, pick a date during the year that you all get together and talk about it. It's gonna go on the operating agreement and then date this, today's date of the operating agreement. We go ahead, we hit save. And what's going to happen is it is now, if you look here on the page, you're gonna see the Pennsylvania operating agreement. This is something I can now download after I start the free trial and send this to my bank. And this is gonna be something that a business banker will take and say, oh, this is a, an operating agreement. This is what you need. It's a couple of questions. It took a couple of minutes. And this is something that, again, is going to save you a lot of headaches when you go to get your business bank account or if you go to get a business credit card. They're going to want to see an LLC uh, incorporation and some sort of an operating agreement. So that does it for this video. I hope this was helpful on your SaaS journey because this is something I had to do a lot of Googling, a lot of research on my own. Hopefully now you've got this video showing you how to do it, where to go to it. I've left links in the descriptions for everything here in the video. And if you like this video, you wanna build your own high level SaaS company, subscribe to the channel. I'm actually gonna put a free course in the description showing you how to do everything, kind of in a step-by-step -step course style format along with a SaaS company snapshot. So hope you enjoyed the video. Again, watch another one up here in one of the corners and I will see you in another video.